So one day you're on a journey to the moon. You travel 239,000 miles and it takes you 50 hours to get there. When you get there, your physics teacher contacts you for a web chat and he asks you what your speed is. What do you say? What, what do you do? What do you calculate? Welcome to Flip Physics. Today we're going to talk about the difference between an instantaneous speed and an average speed. Let's go straight back to the moon example. Chances are, if I gave you that problem right now, especially if you've never taken a physics course before, you would probably get it wrong. Though, perhaps the title of this video might tip you off. Most people would do a quick calculation. Speed is distance over time, distance divided by time. So you might take the 239,000 miles, divide it by the 50 hours, and you would get 4780 miles per hour. But if you did that, Depending on what I meant by the question, you might be wrong. Now that you've arrived on the moon, you're sat on the moon, you are stationary, your speed is zero. What you calculated was your average speed during the journey. Your instantaneous speed, your speed right now, is zero. We can summarize like this. Average speed is your total distance divided by your total time. Instantaneous speed, on the other hand, is the rate at which your position is changing, the rate at which it's changing at that instant. So maybe you're in a car and you're at a stoplight and it turns green and then you press on the gas pedal. You're constantly speeding up, so your speed is constantly changing. If you look at the speedometer, you'll see that the needle will move up gradually. Your instantaneous speed is changing from one moment to the next. So if you wanted your instantaneous speed at a particular moment in time, you would maybe take a picture of the speedometer. But let's calculate it another way. Instead of taking a picture, let's plot a graph of position against time, or displacement against time. You start off not moving at the traffic light, and you get faster and faster. At first you move a small distance in a particular period of time, but then later you move a bigger distance in the same period of time. So you get a curve, like this. Your average speed would just be your total distance over your total time. It's like taking an imaginary line from start to finish and finding the slope of that line. Slope is rise over run, which in this case is distance over time. Distance divided by time is speed. To get your instantaneous speed at a particular point in time, you would have to take a tangent of the curve and find the slope of that line. So you draw a line that just touches the curve at a particular point in time, extend the line to wherever is convenient, it doesn't really matter how long you extend it, then take the slope of that line, rise over run, that is your instantaneous speed, at that instant, that was your speed. One last question to finish this video. If, after speeding up from the light, you put on cruise control, now you're going at a constant 45 miles per hour. After 10 seconds, what's your average speed? And what's your instantaneous speed? Well, if you plot a graph of your car moving at 45 miles per hour, it will be a nice diagonal straight line. Your average speed is 45 miles per hour. Rise over run will give you 45 miles per hour. But you are always traveling at 45 miles per hour. There are no curves. If you take a tangent to any point on that line, it would just be, well, the line itself. So because you are always traveling at 45 miles per hour, your instantaneous speed was always 45 miles per hour. So there's only a difference between your instantaneous and average speed when your speed is changing, when you're accelerating, as we'll talk about later. So I guess the moral of the story is next time you go to the moon, don't forget to bring graph paper. Thanks for watching Flip Physics. Please leave a comment with your questions, thoughts, and suggestions. If you like the video, please press the like button over there somewhere, and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.